when you learn how to paint, the best plan is to start painting things that are simple. And when you paint things that are simple, because they're simple, you learn how to simplify. And then you start painting things that are more complicated. And that is what you need to know how to do to paint complicated things, is you know how to simplify them. You need to know or you learn, like, well, what simple means um, and um, how to start with big shapes and work down to smaller things. So in the composition of the photograph, I started that process of figuring out how I wanted things to look. Um, I didn't just sort of randomly um, take a photograph. I actually messed with this one extensively and um, and I normally, I wouldn't, when I'm painting outside, I don't really mess around with it. You know, I just, I move things around like I want them. I, um, I don't, I don't worry about like if there's not enough flowers in one place, any flower I can see is a flower I can move wherever I want it. But um, when I'm painting from a photograph, for some reason, I, I'm not exactly sure why, I feel like I need to, um, I need to actually add the things like the white flowers were not really here. There weren't really as many of the brown flowers. Um, so I, I, I work extensively on my composition. And then now on my drawing is where, and, and when I'm doing my, comp my composition, I'm seeing it as simple shapes, um, like big patterns of, um, the purples against the darks, against the house, which is really just a big yellow block. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really painting stuff. I'm not really painting flowers. I'm painting shapes and, um, and patterns of light and dark. And I'm not, um, see, I'm not, I'm not just starting and doing kind of a contour drawing. What I'm doing first is a gesture drawing. Let's see, I'm lost. So a few things I can use kind of as, um, to help me like these some of there's a few um buds here that I could use to help me figure out where things are. And I haven't spent so much time on my drawing that I'm completely committed to it. Um, so you know if I find I need to move this way back, which I do. And it might help me to put in this window here because the this part of the building starts further back. So I do find I tend to, I, I know right now already, I can tell I'm making things a little bigger than they should have been to fit in the shape in the space. Oh, Uh, buildings, architecture, anything that's made by humans, and it's, it's easier to simplify than nature. Um, and I guess that's just because it has actual, you know, 45 or angles and actual lines and actual shapes that are, um, you know, you can really get a hold of them because they're, I think I'm going to leave that one little. Yeah, although that doesn't mean you have to, but just maybe I'm going to. What I liked here was this really dark shade against the flowers. And what I, I didn't really love was this big bushy thing here in the middle. So I'm not sure. I might, you know, make that a little. I don't know. I might leave it out altogether because I know I can just put in those, like I've got the windows here. So that means I could. Just uh, put in one of those here. Yeah. 
something like that, if I may. Um, okay, and so I need to have maybe a better grip on where some of these flowers are. And more I made them so good. So get down. Down. Don't get down on it. Um, you know, one thing I didn't notice when I was setting this up was that I let those line right up with each other. So as I start to draw and I see that, um, that's why this first part of the drawing is also part of the composition. So as I see that thing that I don't think is as good as it should be, I can just um, move that flower over a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not a slave to nature and I'm not a slave to my photograph. This is just, I just set it up and I'm doing the best I could. And you always find things that you wish you'd done different. And so then you just do them different. And the more experience you have, the, the easier it is to change things without doing something that, um, that doesn't work when you change it. So in the beginning, the, the more you can do what you really just seen, um, the easier it is for you. And then as you become more experienced in um, painting, you know, then you can change things a little more and let's face it I mean I'm not really trying to do exactly I mean I keep saying I'm trying to paint exactly what's there and in my mind I swear that is what I'm doing but the truth is that probably all artists or most artists really exaggerate things they exaggerate and that's like what it's all about possibly you know making human forms exaggerated what I mean exaggerating the color or amplifying the color. I kind of like that word better. Amplifying instead of exaggerating. So I, I made my first big statement with my drawing and now I'm coming back and I'm, I'm just trying to make it a little more specific so that uh, maybe I can find things because I am going to put the flowers in first and the reason I'm going to do that is that I don't want to have to put the flowers in over the um over the greens I probably I wouldn't want to do that no matter what I was painting in I would prefer to that my flowers have the best shot at being super rich and brilliant without um, having to go on top of greens okay. And a lot of times I show what's going on like right up here at the edges of things. Like in the middle, it might just be a big kind of a blurry mess, but along the edges of the flowers or the edges of the trees is where I'm really gonna show the shapes of what things are, I hope. Okay. And honestly, I'm getting I'm just getting tired of drawing. No, I'm like for the week off painting. No. I think it really helps to know some perspective, just to know the basic rules of it, like the vanishing point. The vanishing point thing, the horizon line, how lines that are above your eye level, like this line, this line, all these lines are above my eye level. They're going to appear to run downhill to my eye level. And the higher up they get on my eye level, the faster they have to run, the steeper they have to run to get to that vanishing point. So it's the same vanishing point for every line, which means that no two lines in perspective can be parallel. But I'm not going to get, I mean, I'm not going to get crazy up here. I just want to get it, make sure it's semi right, <laughs> mostly right. Yeah. Um, using a grid on your drawings, if you have a really complex perspective problem, is super helpful. And I feel like I learned so much about perspective from all the um, paintings I did that I used a grid on. Um, I just I want to know where my yellow flowers are. Maybe I want a few more actually. Let me spread it on. 
Same thing, I just want to be able to put those yellow flowers in and not um, have to put them in on top of the greens. Okay, so now I'm ready to start my color. Uh, my drawing is as accurate as I can make it right now. And I'm leaving out that big bushy thing because I don't know, I don't like it really. Okay, so I'm ready to start my color. <clears throat> that doesn't mean I won't come back and draw later. I might need to. Um, and I'm going to start with my flowers, and I'm going to start with the darker tones of my flowers. The reason I'm starting with my flowers is because basically they're the star of the show, and I want to relate all my other colors to them. Um, and I'm starting a little darker. I'm not starting with the lights on my flowers. I'm starting them a little darker because um, then I can, it's easier to put light over dark. So that means that um, if I get the darks, I'm just gonna start the white ones like all this dark blue. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm looking at my, my, what I'm painting quite a bit. I know you can't see that, but I am, looking over there. I'm not just um, following my drawing. I'm, I'm looking and I'm, if I, if I found some hideous mistake, I would try to fix it right now. Better, you know, to not do it wrong if you can avoid it. And I have my little box here that I'm using to um, put my pastels in that are I'm using for my colors. Okay, so there's my white flowers. And now I want something, you know, reds are, you know, reds are always the big issue. Um, so we need to be sure to start with something like the, you have to, any reds you're using, you have to do it right away because they're, tend to be so hard they won't go down on top of them. So these are just the falls of the iris. And there seem to be some falls where there are no falls in the picture, but So yeah, that's you know a very accurate color for those, but um, because of the nature of reds and dark purples, I just I'm gonna head with that. And now I'm gonna do all the um, upper parts of those, and I'm just gonna I don't know start to do something. So I've been thinking a lot about the idea that you don't, of not worrying while you're painting um, and how to paint without worrying and not letting yourself think about stuff too much is really a big help. So it's just, I don't let myself think too long before I just grab that orange. And I hope I'm not just doing what I know will work. I mean, kind of with flowers, you know, I'm not taking a whole lot of chances. I'm just, I'm just going with it. And then the purple flowers, you know, I'm just using straight up colors. There's nothing weirdo I'm doing now. I'm going to add any unusual things or other notes of colors I want to add to these flowers later. I'm going to. Uh, but for now, the flowers, like it just doesn't, for me so far, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I shouldn't be such a mean. I should just say, oh, I'm going to start those flowers bright green <laughs> and then you know put the purple on top but it's it's not oil paint there are limitations uh to the to the tech there are technical limitations to pastels and i think i think i'm just like all these flowers i'm going to let some more go off the side here because i think that would be better so there are technical limitations so i don't i don't I guess I don't want to do something I just can't get back from in pastels. Now, mostly I don't worry about that because mostly everything I can get back from, I, almost anything I do, I can fix. And then I think that also brings up the question like, well, why would you want to do things that you had to fix? 
that it might be that I just wanted, you know, that there to be surprising. I mean, everything you do adds something to the end of your painting, even if you cover it up. So I guess when you, like, I'm, I'm not believing in mistakes exactly. I'm believing in try, trial and error and working your way toward the truth, but that everything you put down is a part of the journey toward the truth. The truth for who you are. And uh, my truth is, you know, pretty clearly different than other people's truth. And if it wasn't, what would be the point of, you know, everybody, why would we have all these artists anyway? Okay, and so then with the dark, I'm going to put in the darks, all the dark rain. And I'm doing that because, number one, it's easier to get light over dark. Number two, I want to get the paper covered because it's so distracting. Um, number three, I want to be sure, like if I, like if I kind of, I mean, I want to be sure that the, 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 the greenery is really a backdrop to the flowers. The flowers is to me is what's the most important. So I'm not going to do something where I make all this greenery like the center stage. No, the flowers are going to be center stage. So I'm just filling all this in to help my flowers to pop. Recording in progress. So, you know, I'm a big time warrior. And maybe that's one thing about painting for me is that in painting, I worry less than I am all the rest of the time. And maybe that's what, you know, makes it so good for my mental health is that I'm not really worrying when I'm painting. But what I really worry about is teaching. And I worry, one thing I worry about is that I don't have anything new to say that, um, like I've said it all a million times, especially you guys who studied with me, some of you a really long time, and that's super flattering. But I want to be sure that I have something new to offer you all the time, and I worry that I don't. But just sitting here talking right now about what I'm doing, it's like I realize how little I know about what I'm doing and how much. Hey, if somebody has somebody people might need to mute themselves is there something really weird going on yes there is yeah so if everyone could just mute themselves for now if you have a question feel free to ask it but um yeah great more well, i have to learn um and hopefully as i learn things then i'm you know, that's, I'm sharing that with you guys. So like everything I say, I feel like, um, I feel like, I feel like I have to say, yeah, but what about when? And it, it's kind of like the difference, like if you um taking a multiple choice test, for instance, the more you think about it, the more you don't know the answers because the answers are not just A, B, C, or D. The answers, it's all really fluid. Like just now, I had no idea what I was picking up. I just grabbed something that looked dark and kind of did it. And but it's okay because it's kind of like it's kind of okay. So I don't want you to take me too literally. Um I'm I'm basically not exactly thinking, but whatever I'm doing right now, I'm doing it out loud. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to um, express what it is I'm doing, which in a weird way is kind of inexpressible because painting is not a verbal language, it's a visual language. And so, um, so it's kind of hard to put into words what I'm doing. And yeah, so good luck, everybody. I actually can't tell if I'm oh, thinking of this all the way up there. Okay. Yes, well, I see some drawing mistakes here, and I wish, oh, 
wish I'd done a little bit better job, but actually the windows, the windows. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the window. So anytime I need to, I can redraw with my charcoal. You know, I'm so glad there's some of you guys that, um, some people that like to try new things and all. And um, I guess I feel like I have my hands full here. That it's just, just to get this one sort of technique perfected is, um, okay, I think, you know what, I think I'm gonna skip up. I think I'm gonna do the sky next. So I'll put in, I think I can see a little bit of roof in here. I'm not 100 percent sure I really can. And so um, I'm just gonna put that there for now. And um, this is that the other side of the roof that's in shadow. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do the sky next because um because it's big and it's easy. <laughs> so I can just, uh, I don't mess around with the sky too much either. If it's a blue sky, then I I just kind of go for it. And I, I have a lot of blues because um, it's hard to combine blues. Like sometimes when you, have, you start with a dark blue and then you add a lighter blue to it, it's, it gives you that milky sky look and they don't want that. So I need to have, the right blues um, to get the right kind of sky for the kind of day it is. And another thing, when I've got flowers, I mean, what a mess, huh? When I've got flowers going on, I might not, you know, start the trees with orange or weirdness um, because I, I need all of those colors in my flowers. So everything just, it all varies and it all depends. There is no formula um, in this method of painting. She said as she starts the trees. Good. And really, what choice did I have? It's kind of great. I can only film for some reasons that I have no idea why for 12 minutes at a time. But I think really maybe it would be a great plan just to always have your timer set for 12 minutes or something like that. And then you and force yourself to get up and take a look at things. So it's funny kind of how sometimes things that are, are a necessity, like in this case, can't go more than 12 minutes on my phone or it just stops. The next thing you know, I don't even know. And there you go. I'm working away and nothing's happening. I cannot get the paper off this past summer. Sometimes if you've had them a long time, I guess I'll just try to use the other side. Okay, so here's that. Okay. I just broke the wall. The tree. Uh -huh. All right, so now I've got the whole thing covered. And now I want to do a little more before I spray it because basically I just have one color in each place. So it, it'd be kind of good to have two colors in each place. So I'll see if I can do that. I do, I do only have a limited number of times I can spray. Um, with the spray, I definitely feel like I can um, just be as wild as I want, take chances, um, but eventually it's going to come to an end. So I like to have two or three colors everywhere before I spray the first time. 
I don't always do that because sometimes I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to spray because things are just oh, too much. So, um, yeah, you just, you can't trust me. I, I'm, I'm not, I, you know. I don't always do things the same way. Oh, there goes my computer. Okay, got to do something to make the greens a little warmer back there. <laughs> And now my yellow is way too hot, so I want to see what I can do to turn that down a little bit. And so I think I'm going to handle it. And now the house isn't too light. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's still kind of a little much, right? So let's try a little violet. That's a little better. Now the blue in the windows is too much. So it's a little clean. Not that and I think the orange part of the shadows, that's a little too much too. So I'm going to try a little, I'll try some of that same green in there. I think this is that green. I'm just saying, maybe not. Definitely like a lot of value contrast. That's why I like to paint on sunny days, why I'm not as interested in gray days, um, because there's just not that level of value contrast. So, one thing I'm always trying to get um, in the beginning is strong contrast between the lights and darks. All right, well, my house is really standoutish right at the moment. Look at this. Look at all my drawing mistakes. I need some flowers up higher. So, um, yeah, something like that, where you realize that you can get these up high enough right here. Um, a good plan is, I'm not going to be able to do it now because I don't want to go look at my paintbrush, but um, is to use a paintbrush to knock that off before I spray it. So I'll just go ahead and keep working on everything else, and I'll come back and I'll add those after I spray it next time. Um, so on these flowers, now I want to add some brighter whites, I think. So the light is coming from the left and above coming down like that. So keeping that in mind when I'm putting my lighter areas in. And you know what else I kind of want to do is I want to add some lighter greens because these are not sure I like this honestly. And for a penny and for a pound.
I'm never, I try never to do anything that's just that way. Like right now, I'm using these vertical strokes because there's such a feeling of verticalness in the, in the stems and all. And doing that. And I really honestly, John, I just realized how much darker really the tree is than the stuff in here. So in the darks in the um so I'm gonna come back and use that dark blue back in here. Mm. Chaos, right? Oh, I wish I could tell you that everything was under control. But what would be the fun? This is not quite a white, this is a very light uh, violet. So I'm just putting off the white until a little later. Once you've used white, you're sort of that's it, you cook your goose, you're at the end of your rope. It's all over. Is anyone else having a problem with Janine's painting? Like her hand moving, it looks like it's all still. Nothing's happening. No. Yeah. All right. So no. I can just go. No, I'm not. Right? Not either, Trudy. Um, okay. No okay. problem here. No, I'm fine. Now, honestly, I don't even know what color I'm looking for now. Just something lighter. I don't want to lose that guy. God, nothing's happening on my screen. I don't know what to do about it, but so I am drawing, but I'm also not. I'm drawing more with the, the shape of the sometimes thing. I log off and come no, back no, in. Hey Judy. Um yeah, it yes. sounds like your computer's frozen. Uh, but I'm almost done. Oh, okay. About another minute and a half, and then you can also watch it, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm really sorry. I I mean, you could log back off and come back on. Like Mary said, that's often the best thing to do is just try again. Okay. Um, I'm trying to draw kind of the shape of it. All right, so um, I'm almost out of time again on my 12 minute intervals. And so I'm going to stop for now. And um, then the next thing I'm going to do is um, I feel like I still don't have that house gray enough. So this is a flat out gray here. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is spray it and then um, work on it some more.